and it's at such high altitude and at such uh, terrain one of the main issue here is the efficiency of manpower both reduced 50 to 60 percent and you know with this reduced efficiency of manpower and equipment and achieving the target which the organization had set for you is one of the uh, you know like uh, it's the biggest challenge for my team here Hello and welcome to Bharat Shakti. You are watching the series Women in Defense. We started this series to celebrate the 10th year of Bharat Shakti. And in this series, we celebrate and interview women officers who have had stellar achievements in the military. Today, we have with us Colonel Ponum Doming. She hails from Arunachal Pradesh and she currently is at 15,300 feet in Ladakh, where she is commanding the world's highest engineers task force. Colonel Doming, thank you so much for taking out the time to talk to us. And as you can see, uh, she is, uh, you know, set up her screen in Ladakh, where we can see the beautiful uh, location of where she actually works. And that is at 15,000 feet. Colonel Doming, once again, thank you very much for speaking to us. Colonel Doming, you are leading the world's highest engineering task force at 15,000 feet in Ladakh. What are the kind of logistical challenges and engineering challenges that you face? But when you answer that question, could you also tell me about what exactly it is that you're doing there? Uh, as you said, I'm presently commanding the highest border road task force or border road organization. Uh, my office headquarters is in uh, seven, 50, located at 15,300 feet in the Ladakh. See, Ladakh, you are aware it is, you know, like uh, staying here physically fit and doing the work is itself is a challenge. Ladakh, you are aware it's a, a high altitude terrain, yes. uh, has a treacherous terrain, it's very difficult to survive here. You know, in the peak winter season, that uh, the almost the temperature plummet up to minus 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. One of the main challenge as an engineer I faced here is the uh, movement of men, material and equipment from the mainland during this peak season. You know, like, and it's at such high altitude and at such uh, terrain, one of the main issue here is the efficiency of manpower both reduced 50 to 60 percent and you know with this reduced efficiency of manpower and equipment and achieving the target which the organization had set for you is one of the uh, you know like uh, it's the biggest challenge for my team here yes sure sure so how do you prioritize you said that you know uh, the uh, potential is reduced, you know, they're only working at 50 to 50, 60 percent of their capacity, uh, your team. And obviously, there are issues of mobility, there are issues of uh, logistics. So how do you prioritize when it comes to delivering the project? Uh, all the projects uh, in my AOR is just near, yeah, it's just close to LSE. You can say two kilometer, 10 kilometer, 15 kilometer. This is the distance of my project from the LSE. You know, so I cannot actually prioritize which is the mm -hmm. priority one project for me. All the project here in my task force or in the project Himang for the border road organization at Ladakh is a priority one. So, you know, like right. I cannot prioritize any uh, any project that which project is important for me. All projects are equally important for me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so, like you said, in fact, that was going to be my next question. Uh, you know, uh, you said that you're very close to the LSC. And given uh, what happened in 2020, given the Chinese incursion and given the, uh, you know, what has happened after that in terms of troop movement, in terms of, you know, enhancement of logistics at along the LSC, uh, could you tell us a little bit about strategic preparedness as far as engineering uh, projects are concerned? Uh what our team is doing is uh, we are building all the projects in fast space manner all the projects are getting completed within the timelines you know like uh, for example a road 
if we have a project has to complete within two years, we are completing the projects within two years. You know, like infrastructure building by border road organization in the dark area or in the Arunachal Pradesh area, whichever area you take it, it's in the past phase manners. Last year only, we almost completed a 210 kilometer of road, you know, connected with border village like Chumar, Chuchu, Chushul and Demshok. We have connected all these border villages and we made 210 kilometers of road. And when we connect the place with roads and communications, also, it's, you know, like enhances the mobility of the troops, machinery and the manpower in the area and automatically you know, lead to the preparedness of the, uh, you know, like border. But how do you ensure all weather connectivity, given, given the challenges that you have uh, and uh, how does it impact uh, local communities also? What has been your experience working with the local communities? See, uh, in in three uh, in a year, three to four months are all you know like uh, snow. Like you can see in the background also there are snows. All area is filled with the snows only. We do the yes. winter snow clearance. There is something called winter snow clearance in the organization, in the border organization, and adequate funds have been allotted for this uh, work. So in the winter is no clearance. We clear all the roads using the equipment and the machinery we have with the department. And that's how we ensure the connectivity in these areas. With these roads are being used by the uh, armed person, uh, uh, um, you know, like army and as well as the civil and the tourist here in the uh, Ladakh area. Okay, uh, so I'm, I'm coming to uh, my next question. Uh, at such high altitudes, I mean, of course, you talked about the temperature challenges. You talked about, you know, being at minus 20, minus 25 degrees. Apart from that, there are challenges of avalanches, challenges of landslides, seismic activity. So can you give me an example of a particularly very challenging project that you managed to complete despite all these uh, I'm, uh I'm very sure you must have heard about the uh, construction of Likaru Migla Pukche Road which which will be highest it's the highest motorable road under construction at 19400 feet you know once completed this road will be the with this road will surpass our very own umlingla umlingla is the highest road which was constructed by bro in 2022 once we complete the umlingla road umlingla the likaru migla fukche will be the highest and the highest motorable road will be the umlingla so since this is located at 19400 feet height we you know, like wind, we always face uh, wind storms here, regular wind storms, wherein we are, wherein we, you know, like at times we have to hold each other hands to stay in a position. Otherwise, uh, it will be very difficult for us. Then there is the, uh, we all have to face the snow up to feet, uh, feet height, feet depth in the area in that location. And then the rock falls are very frequent in that location being in such high altitude. You know, and especially I wish to talk about this uh, project, especially because uh, 100 of my women's worker are employed for this project to construct this project. You know, especially uh, 100 workers, are, women workers are working in this project uh, for the uh, construction of this road. So, you know, challenges are there, but it's, uh, again, my uh, this all things that doesn't deter my team's determination to keep on building the road. We are constructing, even in right now, I'm sitting in front of you here, they must be doing the work in the Likaru Migla Fukche project. Absolutely. In fact, you know, that brings me to my next question. Let's talk about your leadership. You know, this is not only about technical expertise, constructing roads, at such altitudes, at such temperatures, it is more than technical expertise. How do you keep your team motivated? Tell us a little bit about your leadership style, your personal leadership uh, uh, style. To be very frank, you know, like uh, when I stand with them, this is enough to motivate them. They actually, they talked about it. I get to know the feedback. When I stand with them, this is enough to motivate them. Uh, but yes, uh, we have to take care of their administration, their medical facilities. Their Adam arrangement and the equipment readiness to motivate them. No, apart from this, uh, yearly we reward them uh, for their work to keep them motivated. If I take, if I may take an example, recently on the uh, 26th January 2025, four best worker were selected from the task force and were sent to Delhi to witness the Republic Day parade on 26th uh, January. So this was a reward for them for their best work. 
okay apart from this uh, you know apart from this you know like a special reward like this in the uh, uh, project himang raising day project himang is our higher headquarters is the chief engineer project so in the project himang raising day oblique unit raising day we choose the best worker and reward them accordingly to just to keep them motivated mm -hmm. what would you say is your biggest lesson as a leader your biggest leadership lesson something that was unprecedented because of the location if i especially at. talked about this place the uh, two of the biggest learning for me is the deep work and to empower people you know like when you empower people you actually uh, get the get the more output from them what they actually their capabilities is so i would say the deep work for myself and the empower people can you give me an example of a very on the spot critical decision that you had to take because i'm sure uh, you know when you're commanding an army engineering unit uh, there would be lots of challenges like we talked about so a spot decision that you had to take which in hindsight you remember and you're very uh, proud of uh, not exactly all critical all decisions have been very critical exactly. and you know uh, i'm a kind of person who take everything very okay. positively so we try we manage everything nothing critical we had some uh, casualty in the uh, at site and some casualty in the uh, construction uh, you know like construction site but we managed that so it's it is not just my decision it was a team effort it was mm -hmm. a team effort that's how we could uh, handle the critical situations okay all right all right um let's talk about technology you know i have i have visited ladakh and i have seen the amazing work the bro is doing you know in fact sometimes when i see potholes where i live in delhi i say the roads in ladakh are better <laughs> you know that's how i crib about roads in delhi but definitely technology has advanced could you tell us a little bit about how technology has helped you in your work how things have changed over the past few years and how game changing technologies have helped you speed up your work and uh, you know make your work more efficient uh, yes uh, in the uh, border road organization rightly uh, presently we are using the best of the equipments oblique plant oblique machineries available in the in india i you know like all the technologies that is available are being used in the border road organization if i simply uh, take an example of a bitumen hitter earlier uh, you must have seen in the road construction people used to hit the bitumen in the drum it's a very uh, it used to be very regular pressure hitting the drum in the road side and using it in the uh, uh, road construction but now what we have implemented or what border road organization is using is the bitumen decanter which is an automatic hitting system you know like we just it's a machine kind of thing we just have to put the 5 10 barrels of bitumen in that it it automatically hits up uh, give the heated bitumen uh, in the uh, out in the output pipeline and it will automatically use in the road side construction so the traditional way of using uh, the fire to heat up the bitumen and to construct the road is not being used presently by the border road organization and if you take the example of uh, sir, like survey in the survey work work also we are using state of art equipment like leader you know it's a very high tech equipment for the survey things we are using that for our uh, project reports for preparation of project reports we are using those equipments and you know, these are the few examples i'm giving you but otherwise uh, there are plethora of uh, modern equipments that we are using in the border road organization right now uh, again coming back to the post 2020 scenario you know given uh, what you've just spoken about India has definitely been accelerating broader a uh, border infrastructure when it comes to roads when it comes to tunnels when it comes to bridges what is your idea uh, do you see India shaping up its strategic posture do you see India doing a good job or do you think there are still some lacunae it is a you know like it is the coordination among all the stakeholders uh, that is why the things are building so fast in the border see uh, like uh, the infrastructure development if i spe specifically talk about the infrastructure development by the border road organization such speed or unprecedented construction is possible just because of the you know like better coordination amongst the mod army border road organization the users here and the state authorities otherwise it would have not been possible to construct such infrastructure huge infrastructure in the lsc area 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a very, very significant thing you've talked about. Uh, I'm moving to the last segment of this interview. I know you're very cold, uh, but just the last segment. Let's talk about you a little bit. You hail from Arunachal Pradesh and uh, we don't have too many. Uh, I don't see, at least I'm not aware of too many women, especially from uh, Arunachal Pradesh who have entered the forces. So tell us a little bit about uh, how your background shaped your leadership? Is there something you would like to share? Uh, yes, rightly said, I'm from the Arunachal Pradesh and I'm the uh, first officer from the state of Arunachal Pradesh in Indian Army. Uh, right now, we have only four women officers from the Arunachal Pradesh. Right? I am the senior most. Uh, you said uh, what my, uh, you know, you I just asked me how my background shaped my present, my leadership quality or my personality. I would say uh, in the, you know, like when I was in Arunachal Pradesh uh, with my family, we were never given an option to depend on others. Everything had to be done by ourselves. And I think that is what made me what I am today. If I take an, a small example, uh, whenever there was a requirement of uh, firewood for cooking, see? So, so we had to go to the forest, fetch the firewood by ourselves, get it back and then do our cooking. We had never given an easy option to buy it from the market. And gas, uh, which we are using the gas presently, that was a very far thing. So even the, uh, we had never given an option to buy the buy the firewood from the market also. We had to get it from the field and then you uh, get it and then cook it and then use it for firewood. So I think that's how, uh, that's what built me what I am today. So self-reliance in, the, in its true uh, sense, uh, right? Yes, maybe. What, uh, so obviously, yeah, obviously you are an example of, you know, uh, I mean, you are somebody, uh, so many girls from Arunachal, in, front, in fact, from the whole of India should be looking up to you and getting motivated. Uh, so what does it mean for you really to be leading this elite uh, group of people and doing this amazing work? What does it mean for you personally? Uh, Niranjana, empowered is the word. You know, uh, the uh, organization has. You feel empowered. Yes, organization has trusted me a location, the toughest location in India, I must say, to build the projects which are strategically important to the nation. You know, that's what I feel. Uh, organization trusted me so much, and I feel empowered here, sitting here, commanding people here. You know, like. Uh, getting all the people together to work uh, as a team to accomplish a particular target, I feel empowered. No, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, you completed your engineering and then joined the army? Is that, uh, and then joined uh, the yes, Corps of Engineers? I did. I, uh, or how, how, tell us a little bit about your... Uh, okay, I did my engineering from uh, Maharashtra, then I uh, appeared for the service selection board, and then, then I get into the Indian Army, in the Corps of Engineers. Right. How would you, uh, what advice would you give young officers or what advice would you give young women who are looking to join the Corps of Engineers? My last question to you. Okay, not just the uh, women or not just, just for the Corps of Engineers. To all the youth out there, I just want to say, I just wish to say, uh, be determined, you know, dream big, be uh, determined and be uh, disciplined. One must be dream, one must be dreaming big, you know, ke kuch nahi hota hai. then you have to be determined to achieve your dream and just determination ke saath bhi kuch nahi hota. you have to follow a disciplined routine to achieve your dream then only you will get to uh, you will be uh, you will be reaching there whenever you, wherever you uh, wish to uh, reach lovely thank you thank you so much and with that i'm going to let you go i'm going to let you uh, get back inside away from the freezing cold Colonel Doming, thank you so much for taking out the time to talk to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nilanjana. Thank you so much. And I do hope you all enjoyed this interview. Please don't forget to like and share this video to your friends. I would really like this video uh, to be seen by every youth of our country and motivate them and inspire them to do something for India. And uh, for those engineers out there who are thinking about joining the military, I hope this inspires you as well. And I do look forward to reading your comments. And please don't forget to follow us also on our social media handles. I'll see you again very soon. Thank you.